talk a little bit about some words of faith. Tonight, we'd like to go to the Old Testament for a little bit. See, missions is not just in the New Testament. You're right, brother. Amen. It's in the Old Testament. Thank you. Turn with me to the book of 2 Kings tonight, chapter 4. 2 Kings and chapter number 4. Turn there. I appreciate so much. Brother Miller has invited me to come and be a part of this conference this week. Uh, not often, but I'm this close to home. Uh, we've got to leave first thing Monday morning and head for Atlanta. And then uh, Heather asked me, where do we go after Atlanta? But I forgot. We didn't have to look at the calendar and see. But God keeps us going. And we bless the Lord for it. Where he put his hand on us and letting us preach as much as we do across the country. And you know, I'm glad. I'm so thankful today, and I've been made fun of throughout my family for the years that I've been in the ministry, dragging my kids up and down the road, and for keeping them in church all the time. Boy, I was just terrible. Making them dress right, walk right, talk right. Amen. Man, that was bad. They just burning those kids. Mm -hmm. But I never went to bed one night worried about where they are. Amen. Never one night have I ever worried about whether they had a beer bottle in their hand or a joint of marijuana between their fingers. Never worried about that. Mm -hmm. I raised them in the house of God. Amen. I raised them, teaching them that one of the most important things in their life is missions. Yes. Reaching the walls with the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. You can't go wrong with that, ladies and gentlemen. Right. You can't go wrong raising your kids in the house of God and teaching them the things of God. Hopefully tomorrow night my baby daughter will be able to be with us. She's a phlebotomist and so she works at the dialysis clinic and those uh, <coughs> folks that are on dialysis, they have to Come all hours of the day. She normally goes to work at 3 o'clock in the morning, and she gets off about 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And uh, so she says she's trying to work it, depending on her patients uh, coming in, and she could be with us tomorrow night. And I hope so. And I hope you'll be here. How many of you have never been to an international banquet? Let's see. Never been to one. Oh, man, are you in for a treat. I'll guarantee you. You're going to love it. It is absolutely fantastic. And I can't wait. I was really excited about Brother Will. <laughs> preparing the meal for his missionary. I was excited about that. But then I find out that he's got help doing this. That's kind of like cheating a little bit, isn't it? Huh? Delegate. Delegate. I don't know, but anyway, I, uh, I'm still proud of you, Will, for at least giving it your best effort. But, uh, I do hope some of y'all go through that line before me. Uh, I don't know whether I trust Will's cooking or not. <laughs> this is pick on Will Mike. Y'all noticed that when the pastor was at me, right? <laughs> All right, are you excited? Amen. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives, the sons of the prophets, in chapter 4. Right. Under the last, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, I like to pay attention a little bit to punctuation in the Bible. We all do that. Mm. Now, most of the time with this old hillbilly language and talk of mine, 
So most of the time I kind of run through what I'm saying. My wife today, I was totally amazed at her. Of course, she amazes me quite a bit. She came in and I, she, she and my daughter are in, uh, have been for some time this aerobic insanity in me. And I think that is insane to do all that stuff. But they were down exercising and I was doing what a man's supposed to do. I was drinking my coffee and eating my donut and watching the news. <laughs> I think I was big deal. And I noticed on the news where last night in Elsa there was a big cop fight and there was like eight people shot and three killed. And I was thinking, my mind is horrible. And my wife comes up and she said, what is it? And I said, well, there was a cop fight in Elsa and there was a shooting and there was eight shot and three of them was killed last night. And she said, what, chickens? <laughs> <laughs> we do. 
in our service for the Lord. What should I do? For they tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, what? Thine handmaid has not anything in the house. I don't have anything. I mean, I'm like, I don't have. If I had something, I wouldn't be coming to you. But then we find another hesitation. Right. And she says, I've got one little pot of oil. Ladies and gentlemen, why are missionaries having two and three and four years to get to the field? Mm. Because we don't have anything. Except mm. a little pot of oil. And like the dollar for the McDonald's tea, we're going to save that for us. Mm -hmm. Huh? Um, Come on, now don't get quiet. We're moving into the money area, and any time you do that, we get quiet. <laughs> Woo! I mean, some of these churches I go to preach at, I say my own amen, my own praise the Lord, and I even go to the altar where there's something at least took place. <laughs> and when you get all the money, we honestly look like we've been sucking a green persimmon for a week. Hmm. Missionaries can't get to the field because we don't have anything. That's right. Come on, brother. And we waste more on candy bars and Coca Colas than wow. most people spend in foreign countries for a real meal. Say amen. Like amen. amen. You're right. And we tell our missionaries we don't have anything. But then she said, Say one little pot of oil. This might be our real I remember. I do have that little bit of oil. So. That's good preaching. She then begins to complain about what she doesn't have. Mm. Doesn't that work throughout our church? I can't sing in the choir because, uh, well, I'm just not a good singer. Preach it. I can't uh, teach Sunday school. I'm just not educated. Why, well, I can't run a bus route because, well, kid, get on my nerves. Now, I had ten of my own. <laughs> Are you there? Yep. Huh? We can come up with more excuses of why not to do something than Carter's not liver pills. Huh? Always why we can't. Wonder what would happen if we just simply said, I can do it. Yes, amen. You know, I went through this accident back in 2006. Of course, you see all these old streets and scars, and all of this is artificial skull, and big old holes ground out in my head. And, and, and I had to patch it all back together. And I came out with this arm, I couldn't use it because it cut it off. And they patched it back and put artificial stuff in it. And you know what I did? I went into my house and I sat down and I whined and Betty ached and cried. I can't do this and I can't do that and I can't do the other. And my daughter said, get up off of it and quit saying you can't. They oh, man. Man just ran a marathon with no legs. Hey, hey. Hallelujah, preacher. Hey. 